Welcome to B Shannon's Legacy Radio, where we always have a money talk. All right. So welcome everybody. Welcome to B Shannon's Legacy Radio, where we go have a let's have a money talk. As you know, this is your host, your favorite financial educator, Keon Corniff, also known as Mr. Finance. Always remember that you're one decision away from changing your future for the better. But always remember this, you're always, always remember that the choice is yours. So today what we're going to do is that we're going to talk about um, 401ks versus annuities. And we're going to break down some myth. We're going to break down some history. We're going to we're going to have a great talk today because one of the biggest things that we got to do is that we always got to have a money talk. So let's get right into it of what we're going to talk about. Now, the first thing we're going to talk about is the 401k because this is what people have known today as what's called traditional uh, retirement plan. And one of the biggest things that we never understood is how it really works. So remember what I always tell you, if you understand taxes, you know where to put your money. And one of the biggest things you got to understand is that when you put your money within a 401k, this vehicle is considered tax deferred. And tax deferred vehicles, which pretty much means that your money will be taxed later on. So let me even break it down for word for word. What does tax later vehicle means and what does it mean for your money if you put it in a 401k? Now, it says tax later right tax letter means that money you put in is pre-tax and pre-tax money deposit in account is money that you didn't pay taxes on yet but you'll definitely pay taxes on it later you see when you withdraw this money this money is also called tax deferred and in the u.s tax deferred commonly take the form of like iras and new um uh 401ks and 403bs and so on now what happened in the u.s the way these things work in the u.s is the fact that when you begin to take your money out after 59 and a half, they're going to tax you as ordinary income tax rates. So which means they're going to tax you whatever tax rate it is at that current time when you're withdrawing it. But if you take the money out before you're 59 and a half, you will get a 10% penalty with a few exceptions in addition to paying taxes. Also, something you got to remember, you can't keep your money there forever and you must start withdrawing it before you reach the age of 70, um, 70 and a half or you're going to pay a 50% penalty because you failed to take out the required minimum distribution. So, what, 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 what is this all about? Now, did you know that when you think about 401ks, how did this thing come into play? The gentleman that created the 401k plan, his name is Ted Benner. And what Ted Bennett did was that he was trying to create a a, a nice tax um, tax way for a bank in Pennsylvania for them to get little tax breaks. And one of the things that came up was the incentive of the, when he discovered the tax code um, 400, he discovered that tax code in 1978. And it was 1981, the first 401k plan went into play for that bank in Pennsylvania. Now, what is the 401k, right? You got to pay attention to this because one of the biggest things that people don't understand is that during the 1929, 1929, when the country went through a Great Depression, we came up to, you know, the, the Congress and the president and all that came up with an idea in 1940 to implement what's called a, four, a, a, a pension plan. And what a pension plan is, it's pretty much defined benefit plan. So pretty much when you think about retirement plan, they break them down into two categories. And it's basically it's a defined benefit plan or a defined contribution plan. Now, when they created the defined benefit plan, which is also known as a traditional pension, it pretty much pays the retiree a specific uh, benefit based upon the years of salary and um, service. And they pay this money to this person until they die. In some cases, they even pay out will continue for the spouse or the beneficiary. So when you put it simply, they call it defined benefit because you know what you're going to get when you retire. But you see, because this plan is quite costly for employers, many companies have dramatically scaled back on these plans or eliminate them altogether. So that's why when you thought about guys like Ted Better that created or implemented the, 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 ta the, the tax code on uh, 401k, that's why that is called defined contribution because defined contribution, like I said, is also known as the IRS tax code, which is the 401k, 43Bs, and etc. So when you think about defined contribution plan, they make pre-tax contribution to your retirement account and employees may make matching contribution up to a certain amount. 
See, your employer only serves as a plan sponsor and it has another company administrate its plan and its investment. This plan administrator is typically a mutual fund company, a brokerage firm, or an insurance company. See, you got to understand that you are responsible. You're responsible for the, the, the investment in your account by choosing investment options in these plans and the contribution limits are set every year to adjust to the high cost of living, which is also known as inflation. Now, the other thing that you got to understand is that a 401k is essential, essentially a retirement savings account, which offer tax advantages, and it doesn't. Pay attention. It doesn't have the lifetime payout like a pension plan. 43Bs is similar to a 401k. 457s primarily generally have similarities to a 401k. You see, defined contribution plans invest with pre-tax contribution, thus withdraw, withdrawing the money before 59 and a half, you're subject to be paying the withdrawal penalties with, except, with some exceptions. Also, of course, all distribution will be taxed as ordinary income. That's why these can these plans are called defined contribution because you know what you put in, but you won't know what you may get due to the market fluctuation. So, which means that you don't know what the market going to do. So, although a four hundred one k and other defined contribution plans are very popular, the lack of understanding is still a major problem. And that's why many employees are passive um, participants and they contribute to their plans because people around them do so. It's not because they understand so. So few get in, you know, few people involved enough and are better, better yet, even look at it this way. You just got to take the time to understand and monitor these plans. Because did you know that according to the recent AARP survey, 71% of people with a 401k didn't know they were paying fees for their retirement account. And these fees can reduce their 401k balance by up to 30%. That's something you got to think about. Because if you really sit there, you think you really understand your 401k plan, you think you understand how this thing really worked, then you're, you're, you're in a lot of trouble. So that's the reason why we want to educate you and teach you what we what, what you can do. So let's break it down. Let's understand what, it, what, what is an annuity. You see, an annuity, as many people are concerned, see, annuities is for people that, let's say, Let's say your job didn't offer you any form of uh, retirement planning. And let's just say that you're a business owner and you didn't have any, any retirement planning because you're self-employed. An annuity is something that'd be great. As for more people are concerned about living long lives in, a re or in retirement, annuities uh, you know, are becoming a solution for long-term planning. And an annuity is a saving version of a life insurance product, Right? So all annuities are classified as either deferred or an immediate. So let me break that down. What is the difference between the two? You see, in a deferred annuity, a deferred annuities are tax deferred accounts where the owner invests a lump sum as such as, uh, let's say they roll over their 401k or their IRA into an annuity, or it makes a regular payment over a course of many years. This period of cash growth and buildup is called the accumulation phase. Now, what is the difference between the, the deferred annuity and an immediate annuity? Now, the immediate annuity are different. The owner puts in a lump sum and start receiving payment right away based on the term of the annuity contract. So when you think about the two phases... And the two phases in annuity, the, the accumulation phase. The accumulation phase pretty much means this. The accumulation phase only applies to deferred annuities. And during this time, your contribution gradually built up and early withdrawals during the accumulation phase may face a surrender charge. However, most annuities allow policyholders to make partial withdrawal within their contract without penalties. And in the U.S., if the withdrawing before 59 and a half, you get a 10% federal income tax penalty as with other tax deferred accounts. So then you have the payout phase. The payout phase is pretty much traditionally referred to as the annuitization. And when the owner receives payouts, the annuitization pretty much period, it begins. And there... There are many options for the payouts 
when you think about it, they have something called the period, um, the period certain. You pretty much choose the period, let's say 20 years, right? Let's say 20 years. You receive a payment for 20 years. If you die early, the, the, the after 12 years, the payout will continue um, the next eight years to your beneficiary. And if you still live um, past 20 years, you it will stop at 20 years because it's called period certain. That's why you know how many years you wanted it for. So that was the example of 20 years. How about the lifetime payout? This is another payout phase that annuities give you. You receive payment as long as you live. Payments stop when you die. So also they have the lifetime payout with period certainty. So you can put the two together. So this combination uh, of the above, like I just talked about, let you choose, let's say, let's say you choose 25 years. If you die in 20 years, the payment will continue for the other five to the beneficiary. And if you live past 25 years, the payment will continue until you die. That's why it's called lifetime payout with period certain. Then they have the joint and survivor annuities are usually pretty much for couples. If one dies, the payment continue for the spouse until he or, or you know, if his or her last days, pretty much. So in recent years, new annuity contracts have offered a rider called Guarantee Income, Guarantee Lifetime Income Withdrawal. And it doesn't re to, uh, require a new citation, right? A new citation, a new citation, Adaptation of the contracts, which gives the client more flexibility at the payout phase. So it's a it's a, it's it's important to understand that annuities can be in a, you know an excellent tool if you use them properly. And annuities are not, and they're also not right for everybody. But at least you have choices. And that's one of the most important things and one of the most important elements that you can look at. Now, here's the thing. Annuity is pretty much a reverse bet. So in a way, think about this. Annuity look like a reverse life insurance policy. You see, the primary difference between annuities and life insurance is when payout, is, is, is when the payment is made. You see, annuities pays a set amount of money monthly, quarterly, or annually to meet future financial needs. You see, usually in a retirement life insurance, right? Usually in, in, in retirement, when you think about life insurance, life insurance pays the value of the policy at the time of death. So with life insurance, you make a bet with the life insurance company. You make payments to the policy. For example, 1000 per year, and if you die too soon, the company will pay the death benefit to your beneficiary in case your family wins. The company will then lose. See, with an annuity, you give the lump sum of, of, of the lump sum of your accumulate premium. For example, let's say that you give them 500,000 and you bet that you will live a long time. If you live a long enough, the company will keep paying out you monthly. In that case, the company may pay up paying you more than what you put in the annuity. Thus, that's how you would win. But if you die too soon, then the company wins because they will stop payment or they actually will pay up a certain period. So thus, you got to understand that annuities are a good solution for people who worry that they may live too long and run out of money. Annuities can help them feel confident about their financial future. Here's another thing you could think about. Annuities offer different investment options too. They have something called a fixed annuity, which guarantee you a fixed rate of return, which is the interest upon your money. Then you have fixed index annuity, this return is credit, credited by the market index such as the S&P 500. And the index normally has a minimum floor and a, and a maximum cap. For example, let's say 0% in, 
uh, to 8%, right? So the floor could be like 0% and the cap will be like 8%. So if the S&P 500 goes higher than 8%, you will get credited with an 8% interest on your money. But what if the index is a, it has a loss? It will hit a 0% floor. So there's no loss in the account. So in the US, unlike IRAs and 401ks, annuities have no limits on contribution. You can put in as much as you want. Once again, let me read this. In the US, unlike IRAs and 401ks, annuities have no limits on contribution. In your 401k, they set how much you could put in on a yearly basis. IRA, it's about 6000 that you could put in on a yearly basis or 6500 uh, Those are the max amount you could put in. But in annuity, there's no limit. You can put as much as you want in an annuity. Also, due to the lifetime payout, it is a vehicle of choice for many people to roll over or transfer their 401ks and IRAs into an annuities so they can get the advantage of the payout phases. Here's something else that I'm going to leave you guys with as I wrap up today. Did you know that Federal Reserve Chairman, former Federal Reserve Chairman Ben Bernanke, he put his money in annuities? He used an annuity because he wanted to take advantage of some of these features. So with understanding finance, with understanding how money works, this is how you too could plan for your financial freedom and plan for your goals. That's the reason why we want to sit down and let's have a money talk. So I hope you learned a lot today. I hope you took in some good notes. Listen to this again. Tag a friend. Share it with a friend. So always remember that you're one decision away from changing your future for the better. But remember, the choice is yours. My name is Keon Corniff, also known as Mr. Finance. I look forward to talking to you guys soon. And once again, have a great day. Like and share and reach out to us. Let's have a money talk. Have a good night.